My journey began on the 7th of September, or rather the story began then. I was finally playing my first tournament after six months of the COVID lockdown. I was really excited. I was in the finals and I was hoping to get the title. I woke up that morning with a really bad fever and I still wanted to play. I wanted to go ahead and win that match. So I called up my coach and I spoke to him. I said, please give me some assurance because I'm not feeling my best. We went over the game plan. I felt very confident after that conversation. I hung up and he sent me a text message. He said, I have a feeling, a very strong feeling that you're gonna win this match three love. He's never done that till date. So I was a bit surprised. I entered the complex. I was still feeling a bit tired. I still had fever. As soon as I started playing, all thought of what I was feeling went away. I was super focused. I was in the zone. I won the first two games. At the start of the third game, there were a few long rallies. The score was two all. I hit a shot onto my opponent's backhand. She returned it back to my forehand. As I went to retrieve that shot, there was something that happened in my left foot. I just, it kind of felt like it snapped or something and I immediately collapsed to the ground. I couldn't even pick up the next ball. I tried to get up. I wasn't in any pain, but at the same time, I was limping. I could barely stand. The referee gave me three minutes. He said, that's your medical break. I went outside. I spoke to the physiotherapist there. They weren't able to diagnose what I had. I went back in. I said, it's probably just a small injury. I wasn't being able to stand, so I knew I had to win this match in that game itself. I wasn't going to run. I went into this zone that I'd never been in before. I was a completely fearless, because at this point, I had nothing to lose. I was already injured, I was too love up, and I had to just go for it. It felt although as if a sixth sense in me woke up. I hit amazing, aggressively attacking shots. I knew where to place the ball. I limped on one leg, and I actually ended up winning that match three love, true to my coach's prediction. I was on a high. There was so much adrenaline. I limped out of the court. That time we had the COVID bubble, so my coaches and my family, they couldn't watch me play. They were seeing it online. I picked up my phone and I started scrolling through the messages. I was like, everyone's gonna congratulate me because I just won that match on one leg. But the only message I could see was, how is your knee, how is your knee, how is your knee, how is your knee? I ignored all of that. I said, I'm not in any pain, guys. It's a small injury. I reached home. My dad greeted me as soon as I got out of the car. He had this look on his face, which was very, very bad. I said, Papa, I've just won a tournament. Can you congratulate me rather than looking so sad? He's had two ACL surgeries, by the way, and he's also very, very paranoid and worried about his two daughters, like most fathers are. In any case, I brushed him aside. Later that evening with my coach, I went to the physiotherapist. I was still really happy, guys. My ranking was gonna drop down by 20 points. I was gonna break into the top 80 in the world. And I was hoping by the end of the season, I would be in the top 50. The COVID restrictions had finally eased. All my training was kind of coming together. I was actually being able to play really well. I was so proud of myself. I entered the clinic and I explained to my physiotherapist, Dr. Das, I tell him what happened. He, he examines my leg. He asks me if I'm in any pain. Again, no pain. Now he's looking at my coach and they look at each other back and forth. They both have grim expressions. I think that moment when I knew I was with a medical professional and he was giving me that look, that's when it started sinking in. When he told me, Tanvi, I have a bad feeling, it's your ACL ligament that is fully torn and we're gonna need an MRI to confirm it that sentence in, in itself was enough to crumble my world completely. A small little tear trickled down from my face and I just looked at him so helplessly. And he said, it's okay, don't worry, why are you, why are you so sad? And I said, I know that this injury re requires a really long road to recovery. I'm not gonna be able to play squash for a year. 
that is my job, it's my purpose, it's my passion, it's what drives me every single morning to wake up and do. And now you're telling me after having won my first tournament back on the circuit, I'm gonna have to take a break for one year. Anyway, that wasn't too much melodrama because Dr. Das is very formal and to the point. I walked out of his clinic. A year back, I had actually told my sister that I don't want to ever get a surgery because this is something I don't want to do to myself and I'd rather not play. But ironically, I was sitting on the operating table without ever questioning even for a second whether I was going to get that surgery or not. I knew the surgery was the only way back to being able to compete and do what I love the most in the world. The days leading up to the surgery, everything was all right. I could walk, I could move around. I was even going for physiotherapy to build up some strength in the leg before the surgery. What I wasn't prepared for was how drastically my life would change the minute I got the surgery. I flew back from Bombay, I couldn't walk, I was in a lot of pain. I was basically confined to my bed for a week. I was on a lot of painkillers. After you get operated on, your leg actually loses all of the muscle that it had and also it becomes really stiff. So there's no range of motion. You're basically walking like this. So every day at physiotherapy, they would try to bring more range of motion, even to a little, let's say 45 degrees, the bend. That was excruciatingly painful because it really felt like someone was breaking my bones. Dealing with the pain, dealing with not being on the squash court, dealing with now just living a sedentary lifestyle in my house, I, had, I was in a very negative and a very dark space. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, I would be scrolling on my phone at social media, I was questioning everything about myself, whether I would be able to make a comeback, would I be too old by then, would my leg heal? Today when I was walking to the bathroom, I felt like I did like a weird action, do you think I injured it further? I was in a very negative space. It was the first time in my life that I wasn't a squash player. I was just me, Tanvi, waking up every morning. And that identity that had kept me going for the past 27 years was no longer there. Fortunately, I had a moment during this turmoil period which really, really helped me. A good friend of mine who I had started meditating with about a few years ago, I took a sitting with her. She's a meditating, uh, meditation trainer. After we meditated together, I asked her, you know, I'm in this really dark place. I'm feeling very insecure. I'm very fearful. Um, I'm just not happy. I'm not able to be in the moment. I don't even know who I am, to be honest, at this moment. And the loss, the loss I'm feeling, it feels really bad and no one prepared me for it. I mean, it's just an injury, but I feel like it's something deeper. My purpose, my reason for being feels like it's snatched away. She replied, she said, Tanvi, it's very natural to feel like this. Squash is your life and it's the thing that's been hit the hardest. However, events like this lead you to the understanding that the real you is not who you think you are. That was it, that's all she said. But that struck me. Up until then, I had been looking at this whole situation as this colossal mess. But then I saw opportunity. I saw what she was implying. This, is, this felt like a moment in my life where I decide whether I want to take something from this or not. And I realized I am going to make meaning out of whatever's happened to me. And I am going to come out of this much, much stronger. I started journaling. I started journaling all my thoughts, my fears, whatever I was feeling. And those moments sitting at the desk and writing, I felt like that's the most clarity and peace I had in weeks. What subsequently happened was that by the time my leg healed a little bit more and I was able to walk, I started actually doing things that I had never done for a really long time. I started hanging out with my friends, actually hanging out with them, not just thinking about squash while I was hanging out with them. I went on a trip with my two dogs. We did a road trip together to Manali, which was 16 hours of two really naughty dogs chewing my hair and barking. 
which was probably the best thing I did. I realized I love making miniature cards for my friends, and I did a lot of that. Even during my physiotherapy, I developed um, a deeper interest in how the human body, the anatomy works. I realized about the mind and body connection because now I had to retrain my leg to move the way it did before. Though my body wasn't ready, it didn't feel like it was strong enough, but I had to still force myself to do certain things. So I was learning, I was growing, I was finding light in a lot of different things. And I realized that there is a lot of light within me as an individual, despite the fact that my purpose is not available to me. I have that light within me, regardless of whether I'm an athlete or not. So that was a huge learning for me. It taught me about how important it is to be more authentic. I never understood what that means prior to this, because I always had the next tournament, the next squash match, the next training, and also the coaching and the validation I got after matches. I finally had time to just be by myself and understand who I am at a deeper level. So yeah, fair enough to say that I had settled into my comfort zone. Things were going really well. As time passed and the 10 month mark approached, I had finally regained a lot of the strength and coordination in my left leg. My physiotherapist said, Tanvi, you're finally ready. It's safe for you to compete again. Now that's the test, guys. I was pushed out of my comfort zone again. I felt that, okay, I've done a lot of really good work with myself in the past 10 months. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna storm through the next tournament. I was very optimistic. I went for my first tournament to Chennai, my first match after tearing my ACL. I was able to win. I would say I was fairly better than my opponent, so I didn't play my best, but I managed to win three love. In the quarterfinals, I had a little trickier match. Again, I won 3-1. Now I was now in the semi-finals. I knew that opponent was gonna be better than the girls I had played before. Honestly, leading up to that match, I wasn't expecting much. I was just hoping that I get to play my best. Before I knew it, I was two love up and winning quite comfortably. In the third game, there were a few tight rallies, and I felt like I played quite well, but some of those exchanges didn't go in my favor. When those exchanges didn't go in my favor, and I felt like I, I had already done my bit, something in my confidence dropped, in my body language dropped. The next three games went by so fast, I didn't even know. She won that match 3-2. I came out of the court and I sat with my coaches, my fitness trainer and my squash coach. They both looked to me and they said, what happened, Tanvi? Why did you suddenly look so hopeless, like you want to give up? At that moment, I was dealing with so much emotionally, I myself didn't understand. I only later realized that there's nothing that prepares you for a match other than a match itself. I was still not understanding where the dichotomy was happening why I wasn't being able to play consistently well, why my level was dropping from so good to so bad so fast. My coach said, we have an, a lot of tournaments lined up in the next few months, so we're gonna get better at this. Use this to learn and grow. I went for the next tournament, the one after that, but the same thing happened again and again and again. I just wasn't cons consistent at all. I felt like all my learnings from my 10 months of being by myself weren't adding up. I was probably worse off than I was before the surgery. One day while I was just doing some kind of homework, I was re-watching a match that I had lost. I observed my body language and I had this moment which felt like a very distinct mo moment because I felt extremely averse towards what, how I was seeing myself. I said, that's not me. The girl entering the squash court is very different from the one I can see myself as right now. Something is not adding up. In that moment, I realized that when I enter a squash court, I was putting so much pressure on myself. My expectations were so high that I was completely losing touch with who I was, with everything I'd built in the past 10 months, how authentic I thought I was feeling, how true I was to myself, all of that was going away. It was almost like self-sabotage. 
I decided then that in the next tournament, I don't care whether I win or lose. One thing is going to happen is that I'm going to stay 100% true to my essence. It's not possible all the time because you're playing a match with an opponent. You both are in there to beat each other. Your heart rate is extremely high. There, there are points you lose that you felt you should have won. It's tough. But I'm going to try whatever little I can to try and maintain my essence to some degree. In the next tournament, I reached the finals. It was super tight. The score was 2-all. She was 10-7 up in the fifth. I had been playing well. I had been keeping my composure. I had been playing at points 80 to 90 percent of how I play in practice. Somehow there were still gaps, and that's why she got the lead in the tenth, in the fifth game. She was 10-7 up, and I, that example is like the perfect example of what a pressure situation feels like. She was one point away from winning the match. I was three from saving the match. At that moment. I didn't let that same old fear come into me. I almost went into another state where I just accepted the situation as is, and I played absolutely fearlessly. I said, I don't care what's going to happen. I'm just going to play my best. And that energy within me when I decided that felt like 100% me, Tanvi. I actually won the next three points in not even a minute. The score was 10 all. I looked back at my coach, he was extremely surprised because the player at 10-7 was very different than the one before. There was somehow this unearthly confidence that had just somehow crept into me. Now at 10 all, it's a very different situation than 10-7. At 10 all now, you have a shot to win. And so now you're scared to lose again. Unfortunately, I lost that match 12-10. I'm still not where I want to be in terms of playing my best and being able to play, sustain that level throughout. But what I learned that day after that match didn't make me feel like a loser after that match. It truly showed me the difference in my behavior on a squash court when I'm fighting against myself or I'm working with myself. I understood that day what it means to be totally 100% authentically you when you enter the squash court. You have composure. You have the ability to adapt. You have so many more skills. My journey uh, with my ACL, my injury, though it was one of the worst things that happened to me because it delayed, it delayed so much for me in terms of what I wanted to achieve in squash. But what it did for me was that it brought me so much closer to myself. And it showed me that no matter how pressing the situation is, my biggest superpower is being 100% authentically me. Thank you.